there. Dude, yeah, your and, Twitter and, and, has been on fire lately. I appreciate it. In yeah. in the uh, the moment that was the lead up to the Iowa caucus, and then since then, it's been really awesome to follow your experience. Why don't you like walk us through what that was all like? Like, when did you decide to go, and, and yeah, how did that come yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah, it's been a it's been a really interesting start to the year for me, and and I don't want to get too like metaphysical or, or or whatever, but it really does feel like uh, like God has been you know winking at me, so to speak. And um, yeah, just some remarkable things have happened I, I, that I can't really disclose, but um, I've been following uh, the Vake you know, since last year and through the debates and all these incredible moments. And like a lot of us in the Liberty movement, I've just been really impressed by this guy. And I kind of realized, you know, um, his campaign's probably not going to be very long lived. And if I wanted to have a moment where I might get to meet him or or ask him a question, I I should probably go to Iowa. Um, And and everybody's been seeing all these events he's been doing. And and, uh, so there's plenty of opportunity for that kind of thing. So I, I got the, the notion, I'm going to go to Iowa, and um, while I'm at it, I might as well, you know, see if I can ask him a question. And so I, uh, I book my flight, I go to Iowa, um, it's, it's snowing like crazy, like everything you saw from, you know, whatever influencers you're following, like, was legit, like, even as a person from Montana, the, the, the snow was unreal. And, and here's Vivek, you know, with all his energy and, and doing six events a day, traversing the whole state. I mean, unbelievable. You know, uh, I mean, I, I was exhausted, you know, after my trip. And, and I, I went to two of his events all, all in all. You know, so I, um, I had the opportunity. I, 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 I got to – I went into to Sioux City. And uh, he was having an event at a, uh, a Hampton Inn there. Um, so – Stayed at the hotel um, that morning. You know, I, I, I had a conversation with a really nice uh, uh, gentleman who later I found out was Congressman Steve King. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, I, like, I, I follow politics enough to like to know like who Steve King is, but not to like recognize his face, you know. And so I had this really awesome conversation with him. Super nice guy. Um, I got to ask him some questions. I put it out to, to people on Twitter. You know, what would you like me to ask him? You know, so I don't know if, any, if anybody saw the clip. I think you guys might have uh, shared it um, on the, a previous episode. But, you know, I got to ask him about his, his takes on uh, military conscription and the Fed and, um, you know, his, his plan to back the, the, uh, the dollar with a basket of currencies. Um, which, or, or commodities, right? Oh, that's what I, yeah, yeah, with a basket of commodities. Yeah, thanks. So first of all, um, the energy around him is legit, uh, or you know that that energy around that campaign campaign was legit. I was not the only person at that Hampton Inn who had flown in from out of state. Wow. Um, and you know he, he just is this this magnet that that people want to experience. You know, what do you think that is? Is it his his uh, youth, the fact that he's like more relatable to people like us? Is it the novelty of his message? What is the the attraction about there? I mean, I can only speak for myself, and for me, it is he's he's just such an impressive person, um, and I wanted to see if it was legit. You know, I, I wanted to to see if you know is this just something that is kind of you know doctored for the camera, and then behind the scenes, it, it, you know, sometimes you you meet somebody who's famous, and and you kind of get disappointed. Um, that was that was absolutely not the case. I mean. Um, you know, and, and I would also add, you know, I, I threw three questions at him, like three, three random questions. Like it wasn't screened or anything. I mean, just, just try to imagine, you know, Biden or Kamala Harris, like trying to field those three questions. AI or, is kind of a fancy thing. Exactly. It's two letters. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so, you know, I would, I would say, um, you know, I, I, I posted about this yesterday actually. So. It, with regard to uh, Vivek's idea to back the uh, the dollar with a basket of commodities, I, I think it's um, I love the spirit of what he's trying to do. Um, and you could look to uh, Hayek wrote an essay in the later portion of his career where he recommended essentially the same thing. But that was he was criticized by Murray Rothbard. 
for for a couple of reasons. For one, um, having a currency like that fails what you know Mises called the regression theorem. You know, a, a currency needs to needs to emerge out of barter, um, and then it can become a, a money. Um, so, just a basket of commodities doesn't necessarily emerge out of out of barter like that. Um, and then the other thing is. It's it's one thing to to fix a, a currency to say one commodity like the gold standard, um, but Rothbard you know wrote in both uh, his history of money and banking in the United States, as well as Man, Economy, and State about the problems of bimetallism. So having gold attached to silver and both being fixed to the dollar, what that does is it, it becomes a price fixing scheme between gold and silver. Hmm. Um, so now you've got a situation where at all times gold and silver are going to be over or undervalued relative to each other. Um, Gresham's law comes into play. And so like, if you're going to fix the, the currency to a basket of commodities, you're just going to do that amongst a broader, you know, I think the specific, specifically mentioned gold, silver, nickel, and maybe some agricultural commodities. Um, so you would just create a big price fixing scheme. I think it would be a step in the right direction compared to the current um, paradigm. It's but, still better than fiat, right? right. Yeah, <laughs> it's still better, but um, it, it has its flaws. You know, the other thing, Vivek's answer about why not the gold standard uh, was that the gold gold is too volatile, um, and I mean that's not really uh, in evidence of you know the history of the gold standard both here and in Europe. Um, where over long periods of time, I mean, yeah, you have some flu- some fluctuations, but the trend over long periods of time is is consistently that uh, the prices come down. Well, and isn't it not too that gold is volatile in dollars, perhaps also due to the manipulation of the money supply yeah, of dollars? I, I think if you're looking at um, you know since Brenton Woods, um, gold's volatility has more to do with the dollar's volatility than it does to do with gold. So. Hmm. Um, but nonetheless, you know, Vivek has has these really interesting, well thought out, detailed ideas, um, and he had this uh, this just amazing campaign that he was running that everybody wanted to be a part of, you know. And so, I, I got to experience that. I got to shake the man's hand. I asked him some questions, um, and you know, I thought that that was going to be my trip. You know, I, I had planned to just fly in and fly out the next day. Um, so, you know, I. Uh, go to the airport the following day and um the, the snow is like i said crazy so my flight keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed and i was supposed to have like these multiple connections um and i remember like i was supposed to fly it at one o'clock by the time like four o'clock rolled around i started thinking to myself like i should just cancel my flight go rent a car and start driving back to montana that's gonna be the fastest way i get home hmm. and uh, I didn't do it, so probably for the best. That's a long drive, right? Right, and so I, I keep waiting. Uh, Five thirty rolls around. I'm like, all right, this is stupid. If I get on this plane, I'm just going to be stuck in Chicago. It's going to be a mess. They're going to lose my luggage, so I'm going to cancel my flight. You know, go through all that process, and then I go to the rental car counter, and they're closed because it's Sioux City. It's a small town, and like they close at five o'clock. Hmm. I'm like, oh, oh man, what, <laughs> what am I going to do? And uh, so. I, I didn't, you know, I'm just kind of like, I'm exhausted. And uh, I'm like, I'm just going to go back to the hotel, figure this all out in the morning. That night, I sent out a tweet because I was watching the Vakes campaign. He did an event at some pub. I forgot what city. Uh, Malcolm Flex was there. Uh, if you guys follow Malcolm Flex, a great account on X. Um, and uh, after the after the event, I was watching Malcolm Flex and, and Vivek just having a conversation and Malcolm was talking about, you know, I came all the way out here from Alabama. And so I, I tweeted about that and I said, you know, Malcolm Flex came all the way out here from Alabama. I came all the way out here from Montana. You know, people want to see this guy. This is real or something to that effect. And Vivek retweeted my my tweet, you know, and, and then I found out. Uh, <laughs> uh, then I found out that uh, you know the next day I'm, I'm kind of looking around online and I find out that uh, that night Tim Pool was having this uh, town hall event 
at the Vivek headquarters in Des Moines. And um, afterwards, there's going to be a, a, a party, like an after party open to the public. And so, you know, oh, and by, and by the way, I couldn't rebook my flight for that day to leave Sioux City because I had already canceled it. Mm. Um, so I, the, I, the earliest I could fly out was going to be Thursday. So I, I, I kind of realized, again, it was like, it was as if God was saying, like, you're not done here in yeah, Iowa. You like, got you, sucked into orbit. You got to go to Des Moines, <laughs> you know? And so I booked my flight to leave from Des Moines on Thursday, rented a car, and I just started driving to Des Moines, and I'm, like, documenting my experience along the way. Um, you know, I roll up to the, to the Vivek headquarters, and there's some staffer outside. Um, oh, actually, I got to step – I got I to gotta take a step back. So uh, when I asked Vivek the question – uh, at the Hampton Inn, I uh, I coined the term Ramaswamy tsunami. And, <laughs> Wait, uh, were you the one that coined that? That's the I, first like, time I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. And so because I've uh, seen just people saying it all. Oh over. yeah, yeah. So so actually, uh, this, I, I'm surprised I, I forgot to like mention this. So so like for for like days and weeks leading up to the event, I started like po- like like mentioning Ramaswamy tsunami like in little like dropping it here and there on Twitter, you know because. Um, it's not a, it wasn't a prediction it was never a prediction it was about more ab- about persuasion and uh projection it's like this is what I would, this is what i would like to happen yeah. you know and and, and, well, and it's like you you're seeing a certain energy that is coming behind him and that, yeah. that's a very important thing for like the culture behind the gop because it's showing where the direction is moving really mm-hmm. yeah like you, we, we didn't expect vivek to win iowa necessarily right but. i mean so uh cernovich has made this this point you know really well that going from unrecognized to eight percent is actually a significant accomplishment it's far more of an accomplishment than say ron desantis coming in with a lot of national recognition Mm -hmm. being this like known figure in politics spending 200 million dollars spending 200 million dollars yeah exactly like so you know there uh so i i I, i'm a student of uh robert cialdini's books you know the persuasion books if you're not familiar they're really good books um, and so there's, there's these, uh, kind of tricks and tactics, you know, you make it rhyme, you make it visual, uh, you make it like something that's like kind of fun that people want to be a part of. And so I, I, I started my question by saying like, we don't need a red wave. We need a Ramaswamy tsunami. And, and it was, <laughs> it was clearly the first time that the vague had heard the term, you know, if you go back and watch the video, he, uh, he starts to chuckle and he's like, that's, I like that. And then. Uh, he held uh, after the events over he held a press conference outside of the hotel and he used the term Ramaswamy tsunami <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so then I started making memes so like um, if you if you guys saw like I made the Mickey Mouse meme yeah. where it was like just Mickey Mouse saying Ramaswamy tsunami I made the one with um, uh, it's like the car veering off the off the highway yeah, you yeah, know? and it's yeah. like Red Wave, Ramaswamy, you know. So I made a couple of these memes, and like they started going, you know, like throughout the internet. Um, so it was like it was a really surreal experience, like to, you know, kind of have like pushed this snowball down the hill, and it turns into an avalanche. Um, you know, and, and and I I guess you could say like the Ramaswamy tsunami didn't didn't happen. Maybe it did. I don't know. Like maybe like because it it did. It was so much fun. Like people were were energized and you know, I feel like rallying behind this, this Ramaswamy tsunami thing. Well, I think it's a really interesting thing that it, it, it actually might have happened just in maybe in a different way than we expected. Right. I mean, it would have been an absolute come from nowhere long shot for him to win Iowa right. against Trump's poll numbers. Right. But what did happen with the fact that he didn't win Iowa, but then the very next day was on the Trump campaign trail uh, was pretty impactful and we've already seen a couple of things come from that it seems like trump coming out and promising no cbdc was a big one that you have to think was probably influenced by vivek or that world in some way appealing to vivek's voter base which is predominantly younger predominantly internet based much more savvy with internet uh you know lingo and obviously cryptocurrency and everything around that so it seems like maybe the the energy of that has has been pushed into the Trump orbit and is maybe starting oh, yeah. to have an impact on that campaign. Well, and that's the big thing too, right? Is we've been, we've talked about is 
it's, it's becoming cool to be on this side again, and it's becoming lame to be like on the other side, it, where it used to be the inversion of mostly that because of ago. us. I would say mostly yeah. because yeah. of this yeah. podcast. Yeah. Really, <laughs> we're, we're we're the cool kids at the table. Um, but I I think that's where it is. Is like there's a fun energy that's being had. Mm-hmm. It's like where all the the comedy is. It's where all the fun. It's all where all the entertainment is. It's where like the most entertaining podcasters are right now. They're all in this like ethos, mm-hmm. right? And where everybody else is just, it just kind of feels ugh, like it just feels lame. Establishment. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's boomer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. David, what are your, what are your thoughts on the, on the Ramaswamy tsunami and how the, the effect <laughs> since the Iowa caucus? Well, I mean, I thought, uh, so the polling actually came out to be very accurate. I mean, everyone pretty much got within the margin of where it was predicted. Uh, Ramaswamy didn't overperform, but he didn't underperform. And that's a, that's a good thing. Um, I, of course, out of the primary, I mean, we were the Vivek fan club going into it. So yeah. I was uh, very much like his ideas. The question, it seems like to me, is this the big sad or was this the plan all along? Like, was his plan to get onto the Trump campaign to do this or was this, uh, is this a, a, he's not a plan B kind of guy? Yeah, he's yeah, not he, plan B because that's what he said. No, but but he never actually told us, you know, <laughs> that this wasn't plan A. Well, yeah. it was actually, plan the only A way really? for it to be the plan is to say no, that I think, no plan I think I think he right? he set himself up to have multiple ways to win. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's clearly now, um, you know, many people are saying he's he's the future of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. Um, which to me as a, as like an ANCAP libertarian, it's like, yeah, he doesn't represent me a hundred percent, but I think it's amazing that, that somebody like that is who people are, are looking at as, you know, potentially a, a favorite to be the VP for, for Donald Trump. He's already influencing Trump, you know, seems like significantly, um, whether or not he's the VP or not, I think he's definitely got a future in politics. I think, his shot at becoming the president eventually is is very, you know, very good. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a he set himself up to to yeah, winning the presidency was a long shot. I I didn't go to Iowa thinking that he was the favorite to to mm-hmm. win Iowa. Mm-hmm. I will say I was I I was thinking that he was gonna gonna overperform. I, I thought he was gonna you know have a good shot to to get second place. Um, and unfortunately that just wasn't the case, yeah. but, but he, he had a very strong ROI on his investment. Cause he spent what? Yeah. 20 million dollars to 30 million. Yeah. Tw- like 20 to $30 million for as an investment to have a very strong future of probably the next 40 years in politics. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like that's, that's a pretty strong investment I would say. Yeah. And you know, as it, like, politics he's tends a to make name too, right? Like everybody knows who Vivek is now. It's right. just whether or not they agree with him or whatever, but like right. people know who he is. Like he's become a cultural figure. And well, that's and, pretty strong branding for $20 also million. Dollars. The, the demographics of Iowa, right? It's a very Christian, very white, very like very old school boomer oh, state, yeah. right? So the fact that he's able to pull 8% out of there is no small thing. Um, and additionally that his number one competitor is, you know, a former president, right? For yeah. that voting block that he's And one of the most for. famous people in the world. Yeah, right. right. So <laughs> like, you know, it's not... Um, it, it definitely it's it's I think it's an incredible accomplishment he was able to do, yeah. uh, and I think a big, big part of that too is it does make sense that it's a plan, right? Um, Biden won the independent vote against Trump. He got way more third party and independence votes than Trump did in than he did in twenty um, sixteen. So twenty sixteen, uh, Trump overperforms in independents and libertarians. In twenty twenty, Biden overperforms. So uh, dis, uh, I think Vivek is a huge asset to the Trump campaign in as much as he can appeal to those groups, young people, independents, libertarians. So For sure. that's, yeah. I think those are, that's, that's the, the, the 40 chess of the thing that you could appeal to. That yeah, Vivek is galvanizing the libertarian and independent and young vote and under 40. into the Trump campaign. Yes, yeah. totally. I think that's really smart. Well, and, and Trump's got the boomers on lock, like boomer conservatives. He's got them. Except for some, you know, white suburban women, yeah, yeah, like, but the ones but, that but determine even, the election, the private even equity they, wives, yeah. even they turned a lot in part to Trump in Iowa. It seemed like uh, yeah. from the numbers I saw. Um, so we'll see. We'll see with that. You but there is a strong coalition. He that still has. Yeah. He still has suburban weakness and high education weakness. That's his two major. Demographic a lot of those problems. people are going to Biden, anyways, though. Right. So. Well, I mean, yeah. typically, cl- classically, in the classic model. It's the suburban vote is the is the swing vote that determines the elections when it's close, mm-hmm. right? So that's the question. And then and then you know if you look at Biden's numbers, they're stupid low, right? His favorability, all that kind of stuff. Is is his uh, numbers against Trump and like places like Georgia have dropped eight points, 
uh, since, you know, mid last year. So like that sort of, those sort of things you look to, it, it looks very much in, in, in Trump's favor, but even if it's, it's the turnout model question, how much of the turnout's going to happen, and then what happens with that suburban vote? Because high education still, you know, that's, they almost always go. Well, Democrat, and but. Vivek acting as a surrogate for the campaign, whether or not he's VP or not uh, down the road, he's going to boost enthusiasm for get out the vote yeah. pretty strongly. Unlike the Biden camp, like a lot of the Biden camp, they're just they're not that enthusiastic. They just don't like Trump. Right. And, and that's not enough to really drive massive get out the vote, like culturally speaking. So I, I think Vivek kind of joining the campaign in whatever capacity he's going to be there in the long run is only a boon for the Trump. Oh, yeah. Campaign. I'm not mad at that yeah. at all. 